Hey you guys! So I want to do something completely out of left field and talk about this little cutie that everyone calls their fantastic friend, Vampirina. I know this isn't something that you'll probably see me used to, but I'm going to take a few moments to spoon about little Vampirina here. So first and foremost, how did I figure out, how did I come across Vampirina? Well, one day on YouTube, I was looking for Mickey Mouse shorts. I was looking for a particular Mickey Mouse short. I think it was the Boiler Room. I found it, I saw it, I liked it. <sighs> Sit my juice there. And as I'm returning back to the main page, the Disney Junior YouTube channel shows this thumbnail. And the thumbnail is of Vampirina. It's apparently a new show. And these are the first two episodes. Now mind you, it's this time last year. And I'm thinking, Vampirina in October. And Halloween is coming up. This is actually a really good time to introduce a new show to the children. And of course, it was the first two episodes, Going Batty and Scare b and And as I click on it and I'm looking at the thumbnail, I'm like, why is this, why is this familiar? Something about this is just familiar territory to me. And as the ad plays, and then we see the episode, right at the end of the episode, it says one particular light going off in my head. It's developed by Chris Nee. You know, the very same Chris Nee who worked on Doc McStuffins. And I'm like, okay, I know you. You did Doc. All right, so this is one of your pieces. Let's see what you got. This interested me in even further. So came the first episode, Going Batty. This is where we learn about Vampirina and her parents, which goes into the next question. How would I describe Vampirina to a new parent looking for something different for their kids to watch on Disney Junior? And when I say different, I mean, they don't want to see Sophia the First or Elena of Avalor or Doc McStuffins. Something different. You know, not quite a doctor, not quite princessy, that sort of thing. Well, Vampirina is essentially this. You have, and I find out the last name of this family later on as I'm watching episodes. You have this family of vampires na named the Hauntleys. They originally lived all the way out in Monsterville, AKA Transylvania. And to all you young children out there who are wondering, Transylvania is in Europe. I believe it's in Austria, somewhere around Austria. So they leave their Monsterville town of Transylvania to come to the suburbs of Pennsylvania in this mansion that's been in the family for centuries. Because we know vampires, they age super duper slow. And the whole thing is a family of vampires who have a little girl who is trying to fit in while keeping true to her monster roots. In the process, she meets human a human family, which apparently is their next door neighbors, befriends some human kids, and learns how to, while staying a vampire, become a bit more human. She then has adventures with her newfound friends, her family, and some other monsters that might come along the way, and learns valuable lessons about friendship, family, fitting in, and seeing things in a different point of view. 
Now, when I watched the first episode, Going Batty, of course we're introduced to the family. We're introduced to Vampirina, Boris, and Oksana as the new family on the block, you know? And Vampirina, or V, as she likes to be called for short, wants to fit in with human kids. And every now and again, when she gets too nervous, she has what are called the baddies, where she flickers between bat form and human humanoid form. It's actually rather funny, because there are two ways this gets triggered. The main way is when they get too nervous. Another way, which happens later on in the series, <laughs> is when someone tries to take a picture of her and the flash of the camera makes her go batty. In the first episode, she learns, her and her family learn about the new neighbors. I'm guessing their last name is the Peoplesons. Well, it's essentially the mom named Edna. And after the first meet, because she welcomes the our vampire family to the neighborhood, she gets scared out by the Halloween-esque decor. And this is, again, one of the things that I liked about this because it's October 2017, Halloween is coming up, and you're introducing a new character to Disney Junior who clearly fits the theme. It's perfectly timed. That's one of the things I liked about this show. It was perfectly timed. So, that doesn't go out pretty well. Actually, it goes pretty well, but they scare off the neighbor. So Vampirina decides, okay, there go some human kids, let me introduce myself. And she runs into three friends, two of which become her best human friends forever. The first ones that we're gonna talk about are the Peopleston children. There's Edward, who's working on his own monster reality show, aka YouTuber in the making, and we have Poppy. Now, I don't know if this is true or not, but from later episodes we find out that all four of these kids are in the same class. So, my guess is Edward and Poppy are actually twins. Again, they're in the same class. You know, it's kind of like that Linus and Lucy deal. <laughs> and then there's the other friend, another girl going by the name of Bridget. While Poppy is usually outgoing, carefree and whatnot, Bridget is a bit timid and she scares rather easily. Not as easily as Poppy's mom, Edna, but Monsters aren't the sort of thing that she's uh, accustomed to liking. You know, she's fine with V. She ends up being fine with the family. And, of course, the regular caretakers, Demi, a cute little blue ghost, and a walking gargoyle named Gregoria. Which are some of the best supportive characters in this cartoon. Those guys are something else. Now, one of the big problems that V has to deal with is trying to hide the fact that she's a vampire, which <laughs> that does not happen. She ends up going batty right in front of Poppy. She's startled at first, but she understands a little bit better. And essentially, it's... Well, you're my friend. I'm going to keep the whole vampire thing under wraps for you. And as the series goes on, this works with Bridget as well. So even though they know that the whole family is monsters, they try to keep the monster deal under wraps. Because as everybody figures, they're just blue-skinned humans. And to those of you who are wondering out there, how humans can get blue skin, it's actually due to a lack of oxygen in the blood. It turns your pigmentation, your skin pigmentation blue. There are other skin color pigmentations from lack of blood or sunlight on your skin, 
that can change your skin other colors. Green, orange, purple in some instances. But in any case, the second episode is about Oksana's dream. She wants to turn the mansion where they live into, into a bed and breakfast specifically to host monsters, which she calls the Scare b and b And as she gets her first clients for the weekend, she encounters a problem. Her husband, Boris, invited the neighbors over for the weekend. And as they found out, Edna scares very quickly being around monsters. So the whole episode revolved around making sure that their human and monster guests, which happen to be two other vampires, don't really coexist and they only have one spare room. Which, of course, Poppy helps out with the whole let's not have our vampire guests meet up with our human guests deal. However, near the end of the episode, Edna finds some interesting facial cream. And as she goes into the kitchen over the Hotleys, she runs into the two vampire guests for the scare b and -B. As panic would try to ensue, everything turns out well. Edna doesn't know that they're actually vampires, and the vampires don't know that Edna is actually human because, again, she's wearing the green facial mask. She even makes blood sausage for them. All in all, she gets a good score on the scare b and and, well, their provision takes off from there. I ended up enjoying what I saw from those first two episodes, mainly because, one, it's familiar ground. Now, to those of you who don't know, two, it's based off of an actual book. The book series is called Vampirina Ballerina, and this is probably what some of you are familiar to when it comes to V. I've only read two Vampirina Ballerina books, one during the actual um, ballerina deal and the other one where she goes surfing and I like the surfing one a bit better. In any case, what would I tell children who were looking into Vampirina but they're not quite sure what it's about? You know, what, what can I benefit from watching this cartoon? Well, for one, it shows our children that in spite of our differences, we can get along with everyone, first and foremost. The second thing which I like about this cartoon is that many of the fears when it comes to monsters that children may have, they are actually explained. One particular episode that I love about this is, what is that children's deal with their room? Oh yeah, the monster living under the bed. And I love this one because Oksana is explaining that this moon dust, or I think, no, the moon dust is for Wolfie. This weird dust is what invites the monsters to your house to go under the bed. Because the monsters who live under your bed don't necessarily live under your bed. They just sleep under your bed. But they won't go anywhere they are not invited. The problem with this is... Poppy manages to step into the trail for the monster to head to the Scare b and b The monster sees the trail, but instead of going to the Hartley's mansion, she ends up going to Bridget's house and sleeps directly under her bed. Remember, Poppy and Bridget are trying to keep the whole monster deal under wraps from their brother Edward, who is constantly trying to see all this. And since Bridget scares easily with monsters, this is another problem that they have to dispel. But when they finally meet the monster under the bed, Bridget isn't scared at all. And what's also great is that the monster who sleeps under the bed is also voiced by Lammy from Doc McStuffin, so that's another good plus. Let's see. What's another one? Oh yeah, the, the vamping, yeah, vampire camping trip 
where Edward's trying to get a shot of Bigfoot, only they get a shot of Wolfie instead. Vampirina's pet poodle is Wolfie, but every time he drinks milk, he changes into his true vampire form, which Moon Dust, when sprinkled on the grown size werewolf, <laughs> turns him back into the cute, adorable little poodle puppy that he appears as default. You know? Learning about vampire stars and constellations was pretty cool. I didn't think that they had that, like the prime dancing ghouls, I believe they were. Rather interesting. In the end, what it teaches Edward is that there's more to the world but instead of just looking at your camera trying to get the perfect shot. The next one I want to just sum up is the one I saw most recently and that's the episode Vampirina Ballerina and I was looking forward to this because this is based off of the books. Apparently it's about Vampirina being coaxed by her friend Poppy to join the ballet class for their program's recital of Swan Lake. And we find out that back in Monsterville, Vampirina was really good at being a ballerina and even had monster-esque names for various Vampirina moves, like the arabesque being the scarabesque and whatnot. And she ends up being coaxed into the play's Black Swan. However, Poppy and Bridget are trying to coax about our Vampirina here into doing human ballet instead of monster ballet. Of course, V gets her doubts on it, but everybody calms her down. So she's ready to go. And the funny thing is, everything goes wrong for her during the ballet trying to be human, including going batty on stage, which is taken actually quite well by the, by the audience, including Edward, who thinks this is going to be boring. I don't understand why these cartoons want to do Swan Lake, you know, Vampirina, Out of the Chipmunks. I, I personally prefer Blue Danube, but as they find out, human ballet isn't really working for V, and they decide, you know what, we were wrong. Do the monster ballet that you're known to do. And this variation of Swan Lake, with this advice, turns out to be amazing. Especially the scarabesque that she does at the end. Which, Edward, as well as Boris Hotley say, it's just really good special effects. Vampirina has been on Disney Junior for one year now. And in that year, I know they have two seasons. They might have three, I'm not sure. The day where Vampirina airs in my local listings has changed from Friday to another day. Again, I have to check my local listings. Check your local listings as well. It's actually a really fun cartoon. Not exactly how it is off the books, which is fine, but Christy does a really good job of this. I enjoy every little bit of it, and again, last year when it came out, it was timed very well for Halloween. You know, because of the Halloween theme that goes on with this family. It's a family of monsters, they live in a, haunt, a mansion that seems haunted with ghosts, gargoyles, skeletons, a man-eating plant, and all types of spooky, monstery stuff that isn't actually frightening, but is actually very, very fun. And it teaches our kids that not all monsters are scary, you know? Some monsters can be friendly. Not like Casper the Friendly Ghost friendly, but friendly nonetheless that we can coexist with them without being freaked out. So I'm getting ready to hope for two things as far as the future of this cartoon series is concerned. The first thing I would like to see is the Hauntleys open up more about being vampires. 
you know. So far, only Poppy and Bridget truly understand that they're vampires, you know. Part of me is like wondering, wondering if there's going to be an episode where Edward finds out that V is a vamp and how he reacts about it. Maybe the whole point of it being where he's got it on film, he's ready to show the film, but in doing so, this could cause the Hauntleys to leave Pennsylvania. So he has to decide whether or not he wants to show the footage, which could risk the family being kicked out of herb, the Pennsylvania herbs to go back home to Transylvania. And most importantly, dealing with the mom. Mrs. Peopleson, how she can accept being around monster neighbors. Everything else has been pretty well with the whole monster stuff and the occult themes and Halloween essence, because again, it fits in very well with this. But that's all I'm going to say about Vampirina. I've spoken a bit too long about V and her family of vampires, which are more fun than scary as the adventures are share your opinions and thoughts of vampirina in the comment section below but for now ooh, i take my bat from actually no i'm just going to take my bat from the ceiling i'm done bye bye everybody